Excelsior! Welcome everyone to our second look at the villains of the 1990 Marvel trading card set from Impel, later known as Skybox. Mm -hmm. uh, in the prior issue, uh, we in the prior episode, not issue, I'm thinking of comic <laughs> books, prior episode, uh, we looked at villains like Baron Zemo, we saw Electro, mm -hmm. uh, but now we're moving further into the villain set. Uh, there's a lot of great classic uh, characters that we're oh, going to yeah. see, and again, this this set is what really defined all of our love for Marvel Universe in, in, a, in a bigger sense. Yeah, you got Galactus, Doom, Red Skull, oh, so many beautiful great Alex Ross art them. there, but uh, let's get back into those villains. Magento! Oh, I mean, Magneto! Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's what we would have called it back then. We yeah. didn't know no better. Yeah. Well, we called him Magneto was, for years. Yeah. And, uh, I wow, only, we might have done that too. Yeah. Only for watching Pride of the X-Men. Yeah. Right now was Magneto. Magneto. And it's like, wait, Magnet. Why isn't it Magneto? And yeah. then, oh, Magneto. And now you know you can't spell Magneto without Nito. <laughs> I, you know, it's maybe slightly lazy to not draw a background on there, but I love, I love waves that. of Magnet. That mm -hmm. effect is really cool. The and it, it, it's a very good effect because this set also had like six hologram cards. Mm -hmm. And he's one of them, I think. So, mm -hmm. like, that effect translates well. But, yeah, X-Men number one, the X-Men villain. There will never be a better X-Men villain no way. than Magneto. Uh, and, again, a 1963 creation of Jack Kirby, an amazing costume. Love the purple and red. They never get clo that close to it in the movies. Do they do that in the later cards? Like, start uh, dictating who made uh, who made this person? Yeah, the they, artist credit, is. they credit the artist of the card, too. Mm. But uh, this is back when they did not know he was Eric Lyncher. It was a few more years before yeah. that was revealed, but really? everybody called him Magnus. That right. was his nickname. Of course. Wow. And, uh, That's right. Jesus Christ. I do believe his connection to the Holocaust had been around at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, this also was when writers realized that a man who has the power over magnets controls a whole hell of a lot more than just throwing <laughs> iron beams at people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like it was only in secret wars around in the mid eighties when he's like, I can just fly wherever I want. Yeah. I'm freaking I'm pushing Magneto. back on like everything in your place. That's metal. Yes. Yeah. And, <laughs> and as they say at the end there, they're like, yeah, he is the most powerful, one of the most powerful men on earth. Like, yeah. And quite uh, most, a lot of people may know is from the Konami ar arcade beat him up with yeah. uh, mm -hmm. welcome to die. And, <laughs> and at this point he was still officially the parents of Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch that has been retconned. Not there anymore. Is, no, yeah, not their They're anymore. inhumans or whatever. <laughs> but uh, whatever whatever Fox Studios doesn't know. It's, it's kind of remarkable how consistent his design has been. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, you can't top that outfit. The best one, I remember in Planet X, they gave him more yeah. of like this Nehru jacket. Well, yeah, it had like a very regal look to it. Yeah, yeah. very regal. Like more, poli the, the more like a politician than a super. The beautiful yeah. color scheme has never gone away. Nah, yeah. oh, God, red, red and purple, purple man. Except for maybe so that great. like purple outline around his uh, helmet there I don't believe mm. that's mm, yeah but that helmet is so awesome even in the uh, that's yeah. the great constant in X-Men movies too yep and bullseye. Yikes. The Everybody finished watching Daredevil bullseye. already? Bullseye. You saw Bullseye in the new next wait, wait, yeah, I don't know when people are watching this. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's I, the year 2018. I'm shocked they got blood on that thing, though. Yeah. That feels like they wouldn't be allowed to in yeah. 1990. Yeah, blood in there. And uh, so Bullseye was played to great effect by, what's his name? Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell playing Farrell, a yeah. character who's not he, Bullseye, but whatever he was playing was great. He's the best thing about that movie. <laughs> he's actually. fantastic. But yeah, Bullseye is, I mean, at this point in time, kind of one note in that he's just a assassin, mm -hmm. worked contract work, uh, filed taxes are pain in the ass because uh, of all the contract work everybody looks a hell of a lot like oh god I forgot his inhuman uh, Black Bolt yeah Black Bolt who didn't even get a card I yeah um, and I do believe that uh, that he does have his real name revealed at this point though I can't remember what it is off the ben, top of my head Ben but. Poindexter <laughs> yeah oh, oh he was he was uh, great in Scrooge yeah and, and he, he was better in Revenge for Nerds Jr. <laughs> but yeah they so point what, out wait, here what, like his, his idea is that like he never misses so like he doesn't have powers per se but he's so good with his aim to the point of people thinking he might but be a mutant look at the did you know well what yeah, the, yeah what the fuck is that from well yeah. i, I talked from. about it the adamantium proliferation yeah it well. was in the in the late 80s they realized again uh but this guy has to be scarier well what if he can't break his bones because he'd been crippled and yeah. had his bones broken lots of times he gets thrown so. off a roof in almost every yeah. single appearance he makes but that's yeah, why I, much. that's why i loved it though is because th again these cards these did you knows are such great like 
Magneto has two kids and there are other characters in the yeah. set. Like that's just such a Game of Thronesy like for a modern yeah. reference, but yeah. like how all these things connect and like this was it's such a, very, a it's a it's a digestible appendices. Yeah. And yes. uh, but especially yeah. given how much negative space. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they didn't have much to say, man. But <laughs> it's crazy though cuz one of the reasons Wolverine has that amantium skeleton is because his healing factor allows his body to deal with one the crazy <laughs> surgery involved, mm. but also the poisoning that adamantium does to your body. Mm. Having metal under your skin is not good. Yeah, so like why why Bullseye survived that process? I may have known it at one point, but it's eluding me now. Yeah, and mm. you see, Chris, he appeared in 1975, so yeah, pretty he recent. Is, he might be the pretty most recent. recent villain we've looked at so far. I'm yeah, pretty it sure be. he is. But yeah, uh, but yeah th there was speculation for a while that he might be a mutant because he was so good with AIM, yeah. but I think for a while he maintained he wasn't. I think he that still is not. Oh, uh, speaking of mutants. Sinister or, son. Actually, I guess he isn't a mutant. He's sti or no, he is a mutant. Uh, yeah. I don't, well, I'm sure the card says. I thought he was a says. dude who's, uh, who. Yeah, he's no, a geneticist. Henry, yeah. he's, he's a marauder. Yeah, ah, well, he see. got he got in with Apocalypse and like his gift for genetics and seeing the genetic potential in people and their biological makeup. Mm -hmm. Apocalypse is like, hey, uh, you would be great in my plans to see the earth with worthy mutants. But then Sinister gets, you know, too big for his britches mm -hmm. and just becomes obsessed with the idea of breeding Cyclops and Jean Grey. Uh, yeah, well, he's obsessed with the Summer's lineage. Yes, the like, Summer's lineage specifically. Uh, the, the, for a time, he said there was a third Summer's brother, but uh, that never came to anything. Like, half the mm. half the secrets of 80s X-Men comics. I love the red background on his headshot. <laughs> yes, like well, I think that's supposed to be his collar. They just went in too tight on him. He looks like John <laughs> okay. B right there. Yeah, he does. Well, he they, looks like a 1940s right. cartoon starring Mr. Sinister. <laughs> well, Dave, I thought that, gonna, that he's a trophy hung on somebody's yeah. wall. I thought you were going to mention, Dave, that he looks like Star, uh, Stardust uh, WrestleMania oh. 31 outfit, which yes, is 100% uh, inspired well, by yeah, that. He doesn't have like, the heavy yeah. things. You see, Chris, 1987, Dave, first Hey, we're getting up there, baby. Yeah, he is this a is very... one supervillain created in our lifetime. Yeah, wow. so far. So, yeah, things like he would menace X-Men and X-Factor and actually played a big part in the cartoon, the, mm -hmm. the early yeah. 90s cartoon. And he played this dude who just was always in, like he, I think, adopted Scott Summers and Alex Summers when they got kidnapped by their dad. And no, uh, or, no wait, sorry, when their dad died in a, in an airplane crash but was actually mm. kidnapped by space aliens. Yes, mm. uh, the Corsair. That's why then uh, Mr. Sinister was able to experiment on that. And, and, yeah. and his name is Nathaniel Essex. I don't know why. I guess at this point they didn't know. He was pretty... No, I mean, he was like two years old. Oh, yeah, wow. His wow. card. So, but yeah. that was wow. an, that was one of the tropes, man. A, a vaguely metallic body, yeah. like yep. Gambit as well, and give him a mysterious thing and no eyes. Like yeah. that... Or we, some kind of notable eyes. We'll make up an origin later. <laughs> yeah, it so doesn't matter. Sense. We'll get 12 months... We'll get 12 issues out of who is Mr. Sinister. He interacts with the X-Men a lot. Did... Does it ever come up that he looks a lot like Colossus? Like mm. that skin tone. Where were you? Flat top. Where were like, you? He looks like night. Colossus going as Dracula for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the idea of him. What does he do when he has to trim that goatee? Like, uh. I must go into the lair. Don't watch me. And he's like, God damn. <laughs> this, is, this is tough. Um, but yeah, what else? Uh, Sandman, uh, yeah, good yes. old. Bring me a thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's Wait, William Baker. Well, I'll get into that in a <laughs> second. But yeah, I love his. I mean, that's pretty much how he first appeared when Steve Dicko drew him, which I just love. Like his the the droopy the sand droop of yeah. sand. Like it's it's not. He's just like yeah, just sand's Ugh. dropping out of me, man. I can yeah. the Norman Osborn cornrows. Yeah, and and the, <laughs> the fucking. His wardrobe looks like he looks like a Sesame Street puppet. <laughs> so he's both William Baker and Kane Marco. Kane Marco Flint was Marco. sorry, Flint, Mar Flint, Flint Marco. Yeah. yeah, Flint Marco. But that was his alias when he became uh. a criminal. And then when he turned good, because he was kind of a good guy when this mm -hmm. comic came out, or sorry, when these cards came out, he then was like, "No, call me my real name, William Baker." Uh. But at this time, he was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, Flint Marco." He's been Flint Marco again since mm. like '96. Mitch Connor. And, <laughs> and yeah, he was also a member of the Frightful Four. <laughs> one of the members of the Frightful Four. I have not Four. encountered that that title in a long time. Who are the Frightful Four? Uh, it's him, the Wizard, uh, oh, Pace right. Pot Pete, or the Trapster, or whatever his name is. California. And a fourth person. <laughs> a fourth loser. And a fourth person. They're all losers, honestly. Oh. But yeah, this is uh, this is not like th this depiction is more like, oh yeah, you can make like a big fist in sloppy sand, but it's not like the the crazy like in the movie. 
you could you could totally show this to someone like get rid of the name. This is Glue Man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just love that the the crowd around him is like, is that guy made of sand? What yeah. the deuce? They look scared of someone they should be scared of. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. no, he's leaking. The, the did you know mentions uh, his weakness to water, which is why there was a comic where him and Hydro Man turn into a sludge together yeah. into one Monster Man. But I believe at this time he was an honorary Avenger, though ever yeah. so briefly mm-hmm. in uh, Amazing Spider Man three forty eight. Yes, right after the big story, and he also. <laughs> joined Silver Sable's Wild Pack, a Ugh. bunch of uh, heroes for hire on the international market. Uh, I do got to point out, in his stone-like form, he can lift up to 85 tons. Mm. Yeah, that's also that, why he has fought the Hulk. That puts him up there pretty high with the Marvel characters. Oh, yeah. And the Lizard. It's the Lizard. I, I love this art. It, yeah. Because as a kid, this is Lizard is another one of my favorite villains because I just love the idea of like a Jekyll Hyde thing, but instead of a weird ogre man, it's yeah. just a cool-ass Fucking lizard yeah. with a big snout and like a reptilian mindset. And Dope that lizard who looks he looks like he's dressed like Bill and or Ted. <laughs> this one, which is yeah. this super 90 sheet. Not unlike Hulk being lucky to always be wearing purple pants when he transforms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dr. Kirk Connors is very lucky to always be wearing blue pants and a white and a lab scientist coat. lab coat. But I, I, I don't know. That art is so like dark and graphic novel-y. Uh, it yeah. doesn't tell me Spider-Man necessarily. So yeah. Lizard is one of those characters when you want to play him silly, you can. But then when you want to do like McFarlane did in his Spider-Man series, you you can play Lizard really serious and creepy. Mm-hmm. And there's a really good story in the 2000s where he finally ate his son or something. Yeah, so th- he's uh, he always had a, like, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde level of tragedy to him, too, that he just, he was a dude who lost his arm, and he wanted to grow back his right arm. And this this and origin it's... makes the most sense, quote-unquote, of any. So please continue. I mean, compared to a radioactive spider yeah, body. Yeah, this one I yeah. go, okay, that checks out. So he took the regenerative properties of a lizard, put it into his body, and regrew his arm. But then he grows into an lizard. uncontrollable lizard man sure. who Spider-Man has to beat up in Florida and like force feed his thing and and most of them go like oh Spider-Man gets beat up by the lizard but knows he's Kirk Connors and then saves him and then in the mid 2000s they did the storyline called Shed yeah. where he just becomes more lizard than that lizard it's way, a great white way, zombie way, song <laughs> way more animalistic <laughs> and his getting rid of his humanity was eating his son and yes. Spider-Man it's like, please, you can't. If you cross this line, there's no going back. Chomp. Yep. He just ate him. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, he's he's kind of a goofy character if you want him to be because he's, he's just a lizard man. But right. sometimes that's good. Just a, a primal evil thing. Yeah. And that's fun to read. That's why he fucking sucked in the Amazing Spider-Man movie because he didn't uh, look like a, he looked oh, more like a God. snake than an alligator. I completely forgot Ooh. that happened. Yep. Boo. All Dylan right. Dylan Baker. Sorry to life. bring it up. Yep. Um, Mole Man! Uh, <laughs> I have not seen Mole Man in a real long time. I believe this is Mole Man? Mole! <laughs> yeah. I mean, mole, so Mole, mole Man mole. was the first ever Fantastic yeah. Four villain. The Underminer! And if you've heard, you know, Hans Mole Man, the <laughs> yes. Simpsons character, it's because he looks like this Mole Man. Those oh, glasses, my... man. Ow, my brain. <laughs> I'm just... only four foot ten. <laughs> my I mean, win percentage is 41. That is way too high. I bet yeah. if you did it now, it'd be like 10%. He's yeah. just the dude who shows up and gets beat up. He's not even like a villain anymore. He's just like a confused fat guy who got ad- <laughs> who adopted by Moloids. A, yeah, who is, who's like, what, do they call them the subterraneans here? Yeah, yeah, the Moloid subterraneans. I just remember Moloids because I played Hero Clicks all the time, and they were like these six-point characters. Uh, You're like, oh, I have to fill up up to 300 points. Well, I have six points left over. Screw it, a Moloid. Just put yeah. them in there. But yeah, he's uh, he can summon lots of monsters from underground, but he's not that scary himself. If you remember the Underminer at the, the end Underminer. of uh, Pixar's yeah, Incredibles. Incredibles, that's this guy. Yep. Uh, although nearly blind, he possesses an uncanny radar sense. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that does remind me of Mark Wade's Daredevil yeah. run. He did have these two mean. I don't know if they'd ever met before, but they kind of like, oh yeah, we're both blind and have a radar sense. That's neat. <laughs> Let's ping things together. We should be friends, you know? Like just hang out. Well, but. <laughs> man is a very confused man he's yeah. just a character who evokes a lot more pity than fear mm. yeah because he well he's usually he's one of those reactive villains where something yeah. shitty is happening underground you and drilled into my ground yeah. i'll send a monster at you what and just what is he using there is that uh, that's the from force awakens <laughs> that, uh... no yeah it's just uh one of his laser rods that he you know he's rods. like a king he's got a rod so he's sure. like oh my Minions. I, I decree thee to be awesome. <laughs> a king with Yoko Ono glasses. <laughs> yeah, those glasses are... Ah, man. I would order them, but Bret Hart still owes me a pair. So, uh, all right. 
Dormammu. Dormammu. Boom. He should look even scarier than that. He is another, like, we talked about how Nightmare yeah. was, again, just this god that fights Doctor Strange. Here's another one. He's like, the god of the underworld. He's like, and I don't like you, Doctor Strange. Like, I'm yeah. the god of the underworld. Yeah, he, he or rules over the, uh, what is it, the Dark Dimension. Yeah. And if he is known from anything, it's Marvel vs. Capcom, Capcom 3, 3. Yeah. which oh. did a great job of approximating his stature. Not even mentioned on the card. <laughs> yeah, his stature in the game and like his weird cosmic spooky powers, like they were done really well. Um, that face looks very familiar. Is that maybe a Bagley? I can't really uh, tell. No, I don't think that's Waringo. a Bagley. I think that's Art Adams. Oh on, yeah, uh, on the be. thing. I'd say from the. Oh, hang on. Yeah, you can kind of see on the. Card, oh yeah, that's AA. Right yeah, 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 so yeah, Art, Art Adams. He snuck it in. Well, I'm there pretty sure they all had, the, but the, the little the, the banner of their name uh, yeah, covering up, I think, be. a bunch of signatures here. But AA got it on. But yeah, he is like a. You know, he's not a cosmic being. I mean, in a sense, he kind of is, but he is one of those where being. if he shows up and is like, I'm here to, you know, I'm here to cause some shit to go down, then I, people have to show up. Because they yeah. did a recent story with him, I think, in Uncanny X Men with uh, magic. Yeah, magic yeah. and him fought. And she could, she's a powerful enough mage to give him problems. But like Dormammu was. Uh, you know, you see again, he's a 64 creation. Mm -hmm. He was the guy who was like in charge of the villains that he fought, it, that Doctor Strange fought at first. Like, yeah. Doctor Strange fought Baron Mordru, or, and Mordo, then yeah. Mordo worked for Dormammu. Yeah. He was trying to get the Wand of Watoom. This really is placing a lot of importance on Doctor Strange and his villains. Yeah, this, even though I don't set. think he had much of a book going on yeah, in 1990 I don't either. Think I, I, I read any Doctor Strange at this point because I didn't see any. Yeah, I, I definitely wasn't reading oh, it. I did not point. know he was the uncle of Sorcerer's. Clea, the longtime girlfriend of oh, Doctor wow. Strange. I didn't know that. Didn't know that. Second That's character. an actual did you know that uh, informed me. <laughs> I, despite having read it 9,000 times as a kid. First of all, he seems, it seems weird that that guy is an uncle. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, and also, yeah, he's the second guy that has mother. a ghastly yeah, goal. Yeah, that's another ghastly goal. This copywriter was getting lazy. <laughs> it's Ultron or Dormammu. Which yeah. I'm running out of alliteration, and we have 16 more cards well, to do. It's going to be really awkward when they both meet at the ghastly and goal. What right. I have to assume is some guy chomping a cigar in the next office. Just <laughs> print it. we got to get these over there now. It's a peach. i got to fly to Japan and make a stupid live-action TV show. <laughs> that was probably the wrong era. Um... The oh, man. His head, it looks bigger than ever here. Like, wow. that is too ridiculous. Like, especially on the back, it's like it's an unpopped zit. It's Look. crazy. It's a zit made of zits. Uh, it's, it's probably full of boogers if you think about his it. His head oh. is not that big. Yeah. I like a tall head. Sure, yeah. It yeah. cannot mushroom out. It also just looks like a ball sack. Like, yeah. it really does. And that costume looks like a onesie. Like yeah. a bathing suit, like a yeah. '70s bathing suit. Oh wait, which one are we on? Sorry, we're switching around. So uh, but yeah, the gold looks like just his skin. <laughs> and yeah, the, look at my hot body. It does not look right. The leader, though, the leader was in like a good place at this time. Mm -hmm. He was being written by Peter David yeah. and was having a pretty good plot against the the Savage Hulk. But so yeah, the idea is like he's a, if basically gamma radiation, but as smart as Hulk is strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, though he's in a pretty toned body for like he's not strong, you know I mean? but he keeps he in shape. To the gym. Yeah. Nope. Keeps in shape. I'm, I'm looking, looking at five ten. 140 pounds? Yeah. Jesus. Uh, 30, 40 pounds of that is brain. No, I'm looking at his head and I'm like, na, 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 leader. <laughs> uh, but he... <laughs> He also, wow, he's in 1964 as well. What didn't Jack Kirby do in 1964? Uh, can you tell where Marvel peaked? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, yeah. The, the, it's just a great, I mean, what else are you going to do for a Hulk villain? Like, yeah. instead of a big, strong guy, you have a really smart guy to... Uh, I to mean, at the foundation of Hulk, or most most Hulk comics is that, like, he loves intelligence is, not, <laughs> is, is what he does not have yeah. when mm -hmm. he is the Hulk. And he has mind control, too. That's another mm -hmm. thing. Uh, played to great effect by whoever played him in the... Tim Blake Tim, Nelson? Tim Blake Nelson. <laughs> Delmar. From Obra and then, like, though. the gamma stuff drips into his open wound on his head and makes his head start growing. He goes big. to. Oh, <laughs> he never shows, see him again. If he shows up in Civil War, I'll be impressed. I'll be. I'll well, lose yeah. my shit. Yeah, that'd be great. Nothing. Oh. Nothing. 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 Not, so this I, is kind of a horrific card. I yeah. have been waiting yeah. for this card because I have insider information on this one. Is he ejaculating from his pores or taking bullets? <laughs> this taking is the bullets. blob. So let me tell you, when I first got into comic books, it was mm -hmm. in 1992, Marietta, Georgia, and I went to the comic book shop, Dr. Nose. And the, the out of that place, the uh, clerk there, Clip, also ran the comic shop news, which I don't think it's still around anymore, but it was like oh. this weekly freebie. Mm. they printed up and sent to comic stores all around the world or America so he had inside information when me and my little brother were getting into cards and were buying these cards we bought this one because it was one closer to our full set of 1990 and he pointed out to us that if you look up there 
Look at his eye. He's getting shot in the eye. That there, but there's no bullet line to it. Uh -huh. He uh, Cliff informed us that he knew the artist, and the artist did draw him getting shot in the wow. eye. Ooh. And the card people said that is too violent. Erase the eye, but yeah. they couldn't change it to not right. look, have the bullet wow. divot on his face. <laughs> huh. So he was originally getting shot in the eye. How do you like that? Well, for you trivia? can see the trace, like go, and it just totally. turns the, the trace disappears at his shoulder. Yeah, that would go to his where, eye. Like would be drawn in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I love that art because it, it's really horrific. Like he is yeah. being shot, yeah. and like even as a kid, I could tell he was being shot in the eye. This is like mm -hmm. six bullet holes away from being a garbage pail kid. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. I mean, he's always been a disgusting character. He was 1964 also. Jesus Christ. Yeah, dude. No, but he was uh, one of the, you know, freak show dudes, yeah. a member of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants who yeah. just was like, I'm fresh. Yeah. I shouldn't have said that. That's... But yeah, we mentioned uh, the uh, Freedom Force in an earlier one. We were trying to figure out who the Freedom Force were, but I think that was the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants that had in like a corrupt government front ah, to be yes. the Freedom Force so named, like so many of our bills in Congress, am I right? That are named <laughs> that are named so one thing, and those those spendocrats uh, and whatever There's else. Happens. Bleeding heart smell fair program. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, yeah, he was. He is the immovable. Uh, as a like kid, the Patriot Act, calling things silly things. So they're the Freedom Force. A fat laden form. Yes. Well, his power was. <laughs> He's super a poet. Fatness, and then he was. So immovable. was fat as fat laden. Well, he also says like if he. He has such a low center of gravity. He says he is immovable. Now, mm -hmm. if he like were to slip on a banana peel, if he's in motion, you could maybe knock him over. Sure. But if he gets it, like hunkers down, he's like, you can't move me. Colossus couldn't do it. But the the, the I don't know if you guys had this conversation with your friends. Like, well, what happens when he hits the juggernaut? Like, yeah. what happens? Mm -hmm. Like, I think the juggernaut would just like phew off of him. Like, I think the entire planet explodes. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's ever been tested in the comics though. Uh, he did get moved by a fulcrum once because, uh, you know, or like a, a wedge, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, because Wolverine was the balance for the wedge. And Hul Colossus said, as they say, if you, you could move the earth, if you had a fulcrum and, and a wedge and they did it and moved him. Even. So <laughs> he can be moved. He is not immovable. Just to show you your power is meaningless. Well, he's and also that, not magically unmovable like Juggernaut. Right. So that's why I'd say Juggernaut would beat him. Yeah. Uh, and that, Profile art? I get a McFarlane vibe off of that. Yeah, that's very McFarlane, though. I'd also wouldn't be surprised if it's Art Adams again. Because it looks like Tony Twist or something from Spawn. Yeah, his, that, his, yeah. it's just too wide a grin yeah. for the more normal physique of the yeah. of the front of the yeah. card. Yeah. Blob. Blob. Man, like Black that. Cat. She was more of a tweener at this point. Yeah, she was say. a tweener. But I actually ended up getting around here because of this card. Uh, ooh, ooh. Ended up getting her first appearance. Because oh. uh, I've always liked Black Cat. I just think the costume is cool. Uh, She's a sexy lady. Along with Shadow Cat, like one of my first like, 10, 11 year old crushes of like, what a pretty girl. Uh, <laughs> yeah, how many women have we seen so far? One? No, Wasp yeah. and Storm. No, no, and, in, in the villains. Oh, in the villains. Enchantress. Yeah. And Enchantress. And probably <laughs> Enchantress just those and two. Enchantress and. <laughs> Black Cat. But yeah, uh, was like palled around. Well, pal palled around with Spider Man. Uh, just they were F buddies. They were sure were. Friends with benefits. And uh, when he was in his black costume, and that kind of led to her infatuation with like, I don't care who you are under the mask. Mm -hmm. I want to be with spider-man i don't care and then she, she finds out like you're a knowing. nerd no <laughs> she didn't like knowing he was peter parker yeah. yeah he was stuck in between things where like peter parker was in love with mary jane mm -hmm. uh the woman not weed and uh but, but you're uh, a guy you can't turn this down but she'd yeah. also come she'd been in and out of like mental institutions mm -hmm. and jails like her uh, for a time her secret identity was public knowledge but then it wasn't this was when she was trying to become a good guy i think mm -hmm. by 92 by late 92 she would so this was also when she had bad luck powers bad luck powers yeah. but it would get removed by the power removing machine and then uh well that spider-man <laughs> used his real name. Own power. <laughs> and so spider-man got rid of his own powers the same way but mm -hmm. so then she got technological help to re-become it also at this time she's dating flash thompson mm -hmm. uh felicia hardy was but by now she has become the new kingpin of new mm. york she, really that's that's where she's at now yeah and in the, in the power vacuum of the kingpin she now wow. runs organized crime it's a long way from sneak thief uh, yeah. Yeah. Sneak thief, yeah which but is yeah, a profession that doesn't exist anymore the so, internet ruined it yeah sort of like Catwoman. you know i mean intentionally so cat burglar yes. acrobatic a lot of cool uh, you know, fighting and, and gymnastic abilities. Uh, but I just always love the design and I thought she was a really fun character. So anytime she comes back in, I like her, like I'm a bad guy, but I'm not an evil person. 
and I'm, and she's clearly having fun. So yeah, when you yeah. have heroes and characters come through, like I like being me. I like yeah. being the black. I'm cat. not trying to kill she people. Is no yeah, she's smiling in both yeah. of these pictures yeah. here. Unlike she's, a lot of the supervillains, they're all having a bad day, but she's mm-hmm. loving it. All right, that wraps up part two of our look at the Marvel villains. We've only got one more video to go, and there's so many cool villains to come. Again, so many classic villains that go back 30, 40, even sometimes 50 to 60 years, uh, given how long lived these characters are. But we've got a lot of videos in the backlog, so watch our prior ones and come back for part three of the villains.